Right, I'm starting to get into some fine details. Um, now, I did do some preliminary work on this months ago, actually, but I'm getting close to the point where I need to sort out my handbrake lever. And therefore, I've put some extra bits into the car that you won't have seen if you've been watching these videos. You won't have seen recently, if at all. Not sure, actually. can't remember what I've put on and what I haven't. Anyway, here we go. This is what we've got. So, um, here we have the uh, proposed interior. In fact, I'm going to sit down and talk to you through the... Oh. Right. Let's try that again. Here we have the interior in its kind of almost full glory. So I've put the steering column back in, which wasn't there for a long time. Uh, it's not connected to anything actually, it's just uh, just the top bit. This is the uh, Vauxhall Corsa um, electric power steering uh, system that I've got in here. And these are the uh, Porsche 911 seats, which I uh, did some work on fitting heaters and things months ago. Um, they are almost in position, except for the fact that they should be raised up on a, on a small um, a set of spacers, in fact, spacers like this, in fact, there should be four of those, but so it's sitting on the, on the deck in a way that it oughtn't to be. Um, th those spacers, by the way, are because the um, underneath of the seat needs to have some clearance, so it does need to come up very slightly. Anyway, so this is the, uh, the position as it will be to drive, and over here, is the gear lever. Now the gear lever is quite far back to be fair. I wish it was six inches further forward but I'm limited by the length of the gearbox um, and the position of the engine so I think I'm, I'm gonna have to just put up with with that. I suppose in principle you can rig up some kind of remote gear change. I've seen that done but I'm not gonna be doing that yet a while. Um, but anyway it's useful to have it like this because I can now judge the position which uh, just make some clearance of the handbrake cable or handbrake lever rather which looks very much as if it's going to go here um, it may have to go to one side uh, it may have to clear the prop shaft which goes just there as well so um, in fact probably I should have left the original um, Gilburn mounting in place not sure why I took it off now but anyway it, something will have to go back there, and I quite fancy this. Uh, this is the this is the one from the Gilburn, which is I don't know, it's a bit of a manky state. I suspect it's an MG one or something. Um, and this one here is slightly plusher, and it has the advantage of this threaded boss for the uh, cable to attach to. So that's one major reason. Um, and this one's actually, believe it or not, from a TR7, um, or eBay, of course. So anyway, that's, uh, that will go on very much like that, and I've just had to confirm that I can actually reasonably reach the, uh, the lever and the and the gear lever and the handbrake lever um, while in position. So this is getting towards being quite a realistic look. Now some of you might be wondering why there's such a massive gap here, and. Uh, um, the reason for that is um, that's where the, uh, the the original dashboard, which is completely missing, I've never had that, um, was was in at this position, and um, I uh, what I do to discover where where the position of it should come to. But basically, I can't remember how I established this now, but basically it's the the top of the dashboard comes from there and stops about here. So. Um, and then the instruments and everything are kind of here. So, in fact, it's not nearly as far out from the dash as what it appears. So, um, yeah, we, oh, I remember what I did. I put the original Gilburn ste steering wheel, uh, ste steering um, column rather, in position. And I judged from where it passed through the bulkhead here, because there was a, a mark on it. I judged the, uh, the distance away from the bulkhead based on that. And that's why I resulted in, in this one being here. And uh, it's kind of a, I can't show it to you now, 
It's kind of amusing to me that uh, I'm not sure there's going to be an airbag in here, although there could be. This is obviously a Vauxhall uh, steering column, which has the um, Griffin uh, monogram or, or logo thing in the steering uh, in the steering boss, which is actually not 100 miles removed from the Gilburn one. So it may well be that it goes back in, although this one's a little bit on the tatty side. But anyway, it's an option that I have. But it's, uh, it's quite a nice shape. And even you've got the horn buttons here, and uh, and even controls for the uh, for the stereo, if you wish, which are all connected via I suspect can. Um, now I'm, I'm I'm a long way from choosing electronics for this car, but um, it could conceivably end up with a CAN bus system in it, and that would be a, one reason for indeed doing that. It'd be quite cool to have. Uh, radio and uh, stereo controls on the column like this. And with CAN bus I believe you can make any button do anything, uh, so you could easily rig that up to the hands-free and so on as well. Anyway, I'm straying way off into the future with that uh, that type of thinking, but um, anyway, yes, it's. Um, I suppose if I was uh, being critical I'd say the steering wheel is offset to the left rather a lot. Um, and yeah, that's true, it is. Um, there are compromises that result in that being the case, not least the way that the steering column threads around the threads around the engine. So here it is with the door closed. And you see that uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not as close to the side of the car as, or to the centre of the car as what it is, but it is definitely offset. It's just uh, that's just one of those things. I think um, if you were designing a car like this from scratch with a new chassis and everything, um, this is clearly one thing you would probably do differently. Maybe another time, huh? Anyway, yeah, it's quite nice to have it as a representation of how it will be, kind of in real life. Lovely. Now I'm um, quite a long way from needing an interior. I haven't even got an electrical system. It's only got one seat in that's actually just uh, loosely mounted at the moment. Lots of things to do, but sometimes I find you need a job that's just a little bit lighter. So uh, that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, and what I've been doing is designing a dashboard. And the reason I'm designing a dashboard rather than just using a dashboard is because the car came without any instruments whatsoever. The dashboard was entirely missing. So um, I've had to start from scratch. And I've done that with the uh, old cardboard aided design, of course. And this is actually an old uh, Lathwaite's wine box. There we go. Uh, so I cut that out. Now, this is just the dash top, obviously, and, and also, obviously, um, it's kind of flat at the moment, but I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. So there's the uh, the cardboard design, and I'm cheating a little bit because here's one I prepared earlier. Because oi, here it is, I've already cut out the uh, plywood version of that, and you might notice that in fact I've made it slightly deeper uh, than the cardboard. That gives me a little bit of scope for adjustment later on but it may be a slice off this edge in due course. Um, one difference I discovered of course this piece of uh, thin cardboard is thinner indeed than this piece of plywood and because it won't uh, tuck in quite so well as the uh, cardboard does it kind of sticks out a bit further so it's finished up with some bevels in the corners there. And uh, yeah, it starts to give the impression of what it might start to look like. Now, as I mentioned, um, it's kind of flat. I'm going to bring you over here. It's, it is indeed kind of flat, but actually so is the original Gilburn dashboard, um, it's, uh, which is uh, the original one is, is flat fiberglass, um, but with a bit of a hump here above the steering column. Um, and I will be replicating that so in due course this piece will be cut out and I'll replace it with 
I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to replace it with. Could be aluminium, could be fiberglass, could be more wood. But anyway, that's a, a job for another day. And uh, the, the other thing which I can do is actually, because it's bendy, I can actually lift it up like that to give it, a little again, a little bit more shape. But this gives me um, the opportunity to design something that uh, looks aesthetically pleasing. And uh, you see that's the dash top. That will be upholstered in some kind of uh, leather cloth, I expect. Um, it will need rounding off. I think the original had a uh, rubber, rounded rubber kind of uh, piece on the end, which I may see if I can uh, do some of that as well. Um, but uh, when, the, when I've got a little bit further along with that, then some more work will have to happen down here, for example, to match up with whatever final shape I come up with. Let's put that back in there. Yeah, so here we are. So there's plenty of scope for moving up and down a little bit. Something will have to happen down here. And then finally the flat piece, piece with the instruments in it will occur along this shape here. There's quite a lot of space um, under this piece and, uh, and that's where things like heaters and things of that sort will have to go. Anyway I just thought that was uh, rather a nice kind of lightweight job um, which I did with a bit of cardboard and uh, electric jigsaw. So the uh, template can now go back into the cardboard recycling. Right, a bit of an infill here, filmed out of sequence on um, Christmas Bank Holiday Monday, I think, the day after actual Boxing Day, just to fill a, a few bits of info in that were missed of the previous uh, filming session, shall we say. Um, anyway, I was looking at my preliminary dashboard installation and there's a few things that I didn't quite show, so I shall zoom in and update that. So here is the driver's eye view of my vestigial dashboard interior situation. And here we have the steering wheel, which again still isn't connected to anything. Here is the dash top, which is just in place it's very flat and uncurved there will be in due course a hump here as the original Gilbert dash did unfortunately I didn't get any kind of dashboard at all with this car possibly there may even be a little bit of a bend here to lift up the center section um, and a, cur a very gentle curve may may happen and the from the gear lever I mentioned the gear lever is uh, very much fixed in position by the gearbox but the handbrake lever which I did mention but never showed it um, is here now this gear lever in fact is from a Mark II possibly Escort um, why because it's mounted on two bolts welded to the top of the um, chassis tube over here that simply point upwards and it's mounted to that and the original Goodwin one really wanted to be mounted on the side so that was perhaps a little bit neater I'm not sure why I cut off the original Goodwin mounting to be fair but uh, anyway I did so I had to re reform that and I've got what I think is a fairly neat cover for the kind of outside of the installation covering the edge there and the rest of it obviously will be filled in in due course. I've got a um, prop shaft on order. Um, there is actually not that much clearance inside inside this position, so I'm a bit sensitive to how much uh, it goes up and down with the back axle. Having said that, that's right at the end of the gearbox, right here. 
so that end shouldn't really move hardly at all. But it is quite slim at this point of the tunnel. This is the unadulterated uh, Gilburn tunnel because uh, all the modifications are in front of that, uh, towards the front of the car. Um, so I'm waiting for that to come before I finalise the uh, uh, top cover at this position of the uh, of the tunnel. There is the, there's the original um, which goes in there, but um, I'm going to leave that until I have a prop shelf to use. Anyway, this uh, ma manner of fitting a handbrake cable, in fact, uses that uh, threaded Boss um, TR7 cable end that I mentioned. Um, even though it's actually fitted to a, a Ford Escort get, um, handbrake lever. So uh, I didn't use the TR7 handbrake itself because um, it was too fat across here and I'm very keen to make sure there's enough clearance in here for the prop shaft. So uh, we'll see about that when the uh, prop shaft turns up in uh, 2022, which isn't ever so far off now. Uh, I think it's the 27th of December at this point, so uh, not long to go for 2021. Oh, in my zooming around you might have noticed these things. Now these are actually the uh, seat mounting bobbins that I showed without these big flat washers on. And I thought, well, why not put some big flat washers on um, to provide a little bit of extra uh, load um, spacing is that the word a little bit of uh, extra to reduce that the individual the pressure on the individual points on the floor got four of these so far obviously there need to be eight um, the reason why these exist at all is because the seat likes to um, uh, without, so it can run backwards and forwards um, some of the underneath needs a bit of clearance to the floor so it has to be raised up a little bit to work properly so um, that's what these are all about. There will be eight in due course. I have got a second seat that does fit in there because that's many, many, many months ago um, installed that way. Um, I've got this, uh, so just a reminder, this is actually, in fact, a uh, Porsche 911 seat, a 997 model, I think. Um, it's about 20 years old, amazingly. It's got, it's got an interesting amount of patina showing uh, which is possibly in, in keeping with the rest of the car as it as it will be um, not as it is but as it will be um, so uh, yeah in, in keeping I think and uh, very comfortable it is too especially now it has its uh, seat heaters which you might have seen me uh, fitting some months ago now anyway um, what other things are there so this um, steering wheel which I commented was a little bit far over to the left um, that is true it is um, shutting the door here I think it's possible to see that the whole thing could actually go slightly further over to the right um, so I might need to or might want to do something with the mounting brackets down here I've still got opportunity to do that when I finalise the bulkhead. This is the uh, bulkhead to the engine bay in here which is not fixed in place. You'll have to wait until I take the engine out and it can be riveted and laminated and generally fixed into position. Um, but uh, not not this year I think. This is going to be more of a 2022 type of operation. So uh, Anyway, you can see the car kind of coming together. You've got my electric window over here. Um, my other electric window, well, the bracket for it um, has been made and obviously I can do the mechanism. I have a, another mechanism for that. So that door will come together. It's amazing actually how much of this uh, interior stuff I had to remake, or reconstruct or reobtain. For example, the door handles there. Every single thing which is not fiberglass in here was rusty. I think the thing had been parked out in a field somewhere for maybe many years. I don't know. So yeah, a fully chromed door handle was nevertheless rusty and I obtained these replacements which I think came from an Austin Maxi, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, lots of things to do to re-install re, uh, the interior. 
Um, but uh, not too much in the way of, if you like, design work, because uh, it's more a question of putting it back together rather than creating from scratch, which uh, might be the case in full uh, one-off kit car type of activities. Um, so this is where it, this is the sort of thing that is actually a little bit easier on a, on a classic car that was actually uh, built properly, if, if you like, uh, well, 40, 50 years ago, in fact. So um, yeah, some some things have, on this project have been very hard, and and probably putting this bit together is relatively easy, relatively. Although constructing a dashboard from scratch, yeah, because I don't have one, um, that's probably on the list of more difficult things. But I've done more difficult things like that before, so I'm not particularly perturbed by that. Anyway, I think it's fair to say that this has been. The last video, oh, did you hear that? Green parakeets? I didn't see them, but I recognise the sound. Anyway, yes, this has been the last video from Spegru's Garage of 2021. And so, um, wishing you all the best for 2022. See you soon.